Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. You can't wait to like get your hair and your nails done, like you know, buy your dress and like your date and your prom's date or your prom suit, and it's just everything's so exciting. It's, like, it's just an experience you want to do, and I can't really do that if I don't have my dress. Prom is all about looking your best, and as time continues to tick toward the big night, a West Fargo student is still waiting for her dress to come in the mail. And that student is now realizing that her dress may never show up. Valley News Team's Rose Itzkevis has more on what comes next. Well, I'm really emotional. I was like crying. West Fargo Jr. Yano Loco Sang is in full dress distress after ordering this prom gown at the end of March. Now my prom is in 10 days now, and I still haven't received my dress or any like word from anybody. Technically, Yano's dress isn't late just yet. At day 19 since she ordered it, the company says production could take up to 20. But now she's getting nervous, reading reviews like this one, saying, currently out 300 bucks and no dress. Yeno ordered her dress to be custom made from Australia. I do not like to wear the same things NBL has, especially if it's my first prom. Different is a big thing that they want right now. They don't want to look the same as everybody else. Fargo dress store manager Alexis Hawkinson says one of a kinds are in high demand for prom day. But we register each dress to each school so no girl can have the same dress in the same color. And just as her store's name RSVP implies, Prom's not something you can procrastinate with. Delivery times are big. I mean, even our dresses, they take around six months to come in. And once you find that perfect dress, I'm told you may even need more time for alterations, maybe even up to another month. Hawkinson says she's seen many girls shopping with unprecedented punctuality this year, starting as early as November. She credits the early bird shopping to dress pics popping up all over social media year round. I think them scrolling constantly on their phones. I mean, it's in their hand all the time and the designers know that, the buyers, the sellers, everybody knows that. And that's how Yeno first saw her perfect dress on Instagram. Now, she wishes she hadn't. All this trouble I'm going through right now shouldn't be happening. I should have got my dress, should have been happy. Should have been like making my hair appointments and my nail appointments and all the stuff that I need to do, but I can't do that. In Fargo, Rose Liskovitz, Valley News Live. The dress shop RSVP adds that prom goers have an advantage shopping right here in Fargo, saying students come all the way from South Dakota for their designer dresses. And the next closest place to get them is the cities. If you need help uncovering fraud in your community, call our whistleblower hotline. Call 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Rescue crews had to extract a woman from a vehicle after a one-car crash around 3 this afternoon. The Barnes County Sheriff's Office was called out to Interstate 94, about 10 miles east of Valley City. The woman was taken to a Fargo hospital to be treated for injuries. At this time, deputies aren't sure what caused the crash. They are still investigating. Today could well be the best day of the week from a weather standpoint, and it's not over yet. Hutch, are you advising outdoor activities for tonight? Absolutely. Temperatures are awesome, and we do have some gusty winds over 20 miles per hour. But other than that, we remain in the 70s and upper 60s through the majority of the area. And comparing our temperatures nationally, Fargo at 73, warmer than Denver, Colorado, Kansas City, Missouri, and Dallas, Texas. That doesn't happen every day. Some lightning rumbling through parts of eastern South Dakota and a few sprinkles dashing along the interna international border. Tonight, the wind will subside after sunset. Temperatures in the 60s for the late evening hours. And likewise, we'll see some 50s so by bedtime up in the northern valley. It does look like cooler air is heading our way and a wet weather trend that could turn white for a few. I'll have details on all of that here in just a few minutes. Not too many details, I hope. We'll give you what we can. <laughs> okay, all right, thanks. Yes. An Ohio appeals court has ruled that parking officers can no longer chalk car tires, saying it is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. However, that ruling only affects Kentucky, Ohio, Michigan, and Tennessee. In West Fargo, police say chalking is still a practice they use to enforce their 72-hour parking rule. However, Fargo and Moorhead use license plate technology. Officers say it's much easier to keep track of vehicle time limits with photos rather than chalk. If we scan them at 8 o'clock and come back later, say at 9.40, 9.45, and that same vehicle is there, the computer will tell us, um, and then we will issue a ticket or a warning. Fargo officials also tell us that parking meters would help with parking problems in the downtown area. However, North Dakota Century Code does not allow them. 
A babysitter in Fergus Falls is facing multiple charges after she was allegedly found drinking and drunk while caring for five children. 34-year-old Tanya Tomerdahl is charged with child neglect and obstructing the legal process. On April 19th, an officer was waved down by three young children who said that Tomerdahl was passed out, that a 10-year-old boy had left the house and they were looking for him. Officers say when they went to the house to wake Tomerdahl, she allegedly had a strong smell of alcohol. Now, court documents say a different woman pulled up and told the responding officer that she did locate that missing 10-year-old. Bemidji police want your help identifying people of interest in one of their ongoing investigations. If you know these people, contact Officer Burford at 218-368-9352. Be sure to reference photo number 390 when speaking with the officer or when leaving a message. There's been a show of support for an embattled bus driver in Thief River Falls. Joel Kizar faces a fifth degree assault charge after witnesses say he choked a child who was riding his school bus. Nearly 20 of Kizar's co-workers have come out in his defense. In a letter to the editor of the Thief River Falls newspaper, other school bus drivers and aides say unruly children compromise the safety on their buses, and they argue that the discipline of those children has been inconsistent. To prevent future incidents, we're told the Thief River Falls transportation staff and school leaders are reviewing their policies and hope to have a recommendation for the superintendent by the end of the year. North Dakota's legislature has voted to commit public money, money for the Theodore Roosevelt's Presidential Library. After an hour-long debate, the House voted 76 to 16 to use $50 million from the state treasury and loans from the state-owned Bank of North Dakota to help fund operating and maintenance costs of the proposed library in Medora. The money must be matched by $100 million in private funds to build the facility. The legislation says $10 million from the private funds would be used to digitize presidential documents at a nearby university. The project has been a top priority of Governor Doug Burgum. It now heads to his desk for his signature. North Dakota Senate has approved an income tax deduction on Social Security benefits. The bill eliminates state taxes up to $50,000 for single filers and $100,000 for married couples filing jointly. AARP State Director says the tax break will affect about 30,000 North Dakotans. The exemptions will mean a cost to the state treasury of $7.3 million in the next two-year budget cycle. The bill now goes to Governor Doug Burgum's desk for his signature. Republicans who control the Minnesota Senate have unveiled a tax bill that they say will benefit all Minnesota taxpayers and provide tax cuts to half of them. The bill would raise gasoline and other taxes and preserve an expiring tax on health care providers. It includes a quarter point income tax cut for middle class taxpayers and would shelter more Social Security income. The bill also expands the ability of businesses and farmers to deduct equipment purchases. The Bison are back at it this Friday, April 26th. NDSU is going to be playing its annual spring football game at the Fargo Dome. You can catch all the action live from 6.30 to 8 o'clock on KVLY. That's right here. And because of that, we also want to alert you to a programming note due to the Bison spring game. Wheel of Fortune will move that night, Friday, to KX4 at 6.30. Also, the show Blacklist will air from 8 to 10 immediately after the game.